Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and today I'm going to show you my three favorite methods for swirling cold process soap. Now if you've never made cold process soap before, swirling is probably not the first thing you want to start with. Go back to the beginning of this, this channel and get some basics under your belt. But once you've got one or two basic soap recipes under your belt, well you're ready for the world of swirling. To really make sure that you're set up for success on your first swirling batches, I've got a few tips. One, trace. Pay attention to how thick your soap is getting. The longer you stick blend, the thicker that soap is going to get. A thin to medium trace is the perfect for swirls. It looks like kind of a thin cake batter or a thicker milkshake. The next tip is to make sure you have everything set up ahead of time. That soap can move pretty quickly, so you want to make sure that all of your colors are pre-mixed, your fragrance is fully measured out, your mold is ready to go. Next, consider your recipe. The types of oil you choose can have a huge effect on your soap batter. So solid oils can go more solid more quickly in your soap batter, or more liquid oils sometimes can take a long time to reach trace. The Brambleberry Swirl Quick Mix is indeed perfect for swirling soap. The Quick Mix is just a pre-measured combination of oils that are ideal for swirling. And then finally, fragrance is a very important component of making sure your swirl is going to turn out each and every time. Sub fragrances can do something called accelerate trace, which is to thicken the soap batter, well, quicker than you'd like. So make sure the fragrance you're using has been fully tested for cold process soap and says it performs well in cold process soap. And then finally, it is soap. Experiment, have an open mind. If your batch doesn't turn out perfectly the first time, you know what, it is still wonderful soap. You can use it, you can give it away, you can grate it up and put it in another batch, you can rebatch it. Possibilities are endless. Don't get frustrated if your design doesn't work out perfectly the very first time. So, it's time to get started making soap. For all of these three batches, I'm going to use Brambleberry's Energy Fragrance, which lasts a really long time in soap, so it gives you the perfect amount of time to swirl. This is a technique video as opposed to a recipe video. So if you're looking for a recipe video, we have lots of them on this channel, but this is really so you can learn these three different types of swirling techniques. Okay, now we're going to get started with our very first swirl, the one that I think is probably the easiest to learn, which is the drop swirl. You'll notice I am suited up for safety goggles on, gloves on, kids and pets in another area, and of course I do have a full hour to work with this. My colors are all mixed up. Having contrasting colors is so key for your swirl to turn out really beautifully. First things first, let's go ahead and put that stick blender in, give it a tap, get rid of any air bubbles, pour your lye water in. This lye water does have a little bit of sodium lactate added to it, which is an optional step, but I like it because it helps the soap to remove from the mold faster and makes for a more bright and shiny batch of soap. All right, so now I'm gonna give this a quick stick blend. Get this to a nice thin trace. Trace is the refers to the thickness of the soap and really what trace refers to is can you actually see thin trailings or be able to trace your name on the top of the soap so when the soap looks like a very kind of thick milkshake or a thin cake batter you know you've hit thin to medium trace i always like to also look at the color that's a little more advanced but soap that isn't fully traced is just a little more yellow than soap that is fully traced and this is looking pretty good. We're at a nice, this is definitely a nice thin trace, fully emulsified. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm actually gonna fragrance the whole entire batch because this is energy fragrance oil. I know it's gonna be perfect and work beautifully for me. I'm gonna just fragrance everything so that way I don't have to do three individual bowls of soap with individual fragrances, but if you're ever working with a fragrance that's at all troublesome, you're definitely going to want to individually fragrance the different containers of soap. But Energy is the superstar of soap making fragrances, and you can just add it to the entire batch. So now I'm going to do two containers with my accent colors, and I'm gonna leave the white in my big bowl here. And my white here is going to get the lion's share of the color. And there we go, beautiful white. And this is going to be a really nice, gorgeous, opaque white. I might give it a quick stick blend in a second just to make sure that that white is fully mixed in. And then here's my green. We'll just do a teaspoon of that. 
and my purple. And we'll do a teaspoon of this. The Queen's Purple Mica from Brambleberry is spectacular. I love it so very much. These ones I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly hand whisk in. I can see from the sides they're perfect. And then my purple. But I am going to stick blend this titanium dioxide just a tinch to make sure that it's fully mixed in. So this is an in the pot swirl. And what I like to do with the in the pot swirl is pour in four different areas. And lots of people do it lots of different ways. I pour from high to low in basically the 12 o'clock and the three o'clock. And other people do it kind of all over like a polka dot. It's just kind of a personal preference. Um, you'll find that this in the pot swirl is aptly named because we will actually do all the swirling in the pot. So there's the end of my green. I'm gonna put that to the side and then I'm gonna do the purple right off to the kind of side. So high to low and you're going low to high. So, in, so now we're doing like one o'clock, four o'clock, seven o'clock and 10 o'clock. And you can see that the Soap it, batter is rising as we start adding this. And with whatever you have left, just kind of up and down because this is what creates our swirl. And I like to do one last swirl right inside. Now this is a total personal preference. I always just do one just all the way through like that just to ensure and then there's a couple different ways you can pour this into the mold. Some people like to pour right here and stay right here. Other people will go all the way down the mold like this. It's really a personal preference. If you do this, you end up with a very different look than if you do all the way through. But you can see that swirl is just gorgeous and is looking spectacular. So now, you have a design on the top and we'll take a little chopstick or something and just give us a nice little cute design. I, there's a tiny little bit left here so I'm just going to kind of put it down the top and then I'll do a tiny little swirl on the top just because it's fun. And then this particular soap is going to definitely result in the most wispy of the swirls. So keep that in mind when you are making it. It's the most romantic, most delicate of the swirls. And so here you can do kind of whatever you want. The previous batch we did, we did slightly more bigger loops. And you can do loop-de-loops. You can kind of do whatever you want. Just don't overdo it or else your wisps end up not looking so great. And that's it. Your drop swirl is done. Now it's time to put this on a heat pad to force gel phase, spray it with 99% rubbing alcohol, and woof. So here's the batch we made just a couple days ago, and we're gonna pull gently away from the sides. Hello, thank you, sodium lactate, for a nice, easy release. Gonna look at the bottom, gently coming out. Done and done. Whee! Done and done. So now we're just gonna turn this over gently. Whee! Okay, moment of truth. I'm just gonna kinda cut in a in the, not quite the middle, but close enough. And wee, that is what that looks like. It's gorgeous, it looks really complicated, but we all know it wasn't that complicated. It's beautiful, visually appealing. So for our next perfect beginner swirl, we're gonna do a drop swirl, which is essentially what we just did, only now we're gonna swirl in the mold. So same exact thing as we did before. We're gonna take our stick blender, burp it on the bottom of our bowl, pour slowly down the shaft of the blender, and then, whoop, air bubbles. Ugh. Okay, then turn our stick blender on until we get a very thin trace. And you notice I'm moving my stick blender around because I don't want that stick blender just to decide to try and emulsify soap in one position. I'm gonna check to see what my trace looks like. 
I noticed my color is changing just a little bit. It's getting a little more yellow. I'm not seeing the trailings. That tells me I'm probably emulsified, but I'm not quite to a safe thin trace. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit more and I can see that color changing just a little bit where I'm stick blending. So that told me I wasn't actually at a thin trace. And again, it's not that big of a deal, but you do run the risk of the soap getting excessive soda ash if it's not fully traced or even separating in the mold, which is no fun. So now I'm gonna split this off into two smaller batches and leave this main one here for the white, just like we did. Just like we did with the in the pot swirl. So two here, plus that cuts down on just a little bit of dishes. And gonna eyeball this just like we did before. And the last time I did fragrance in every, in the whole thing, honestly, I just forgot that. So I'll be doing it in the, this one separately, which is just fine. So I'm gonna put the fragrance in here and the energy fragrance acts so well that this is gonna be just fine to add into them separately. And a little bit of titanium dioxide. And then I will hand mix that in first, but I will give that a quick stick blend. Um, to make sure it's fully incorporated in. That's kind of the only one I need to. That titanium dioxide can get a little clumpy even when you pre-mix it. And then my Queen's Purple Mica, fantastic color, nice and beautiful and contrasty. And I am doing three colors. You know what? You honestly don't need to do three. You could just get away with two colors. Um, or you could go up to like seven. Sure, you could make a rainbow soap if you wanted, like all kinds of fun options here. But one to three is a really manageable amount, especially if you're a beginner soap maker. So now I'm just gonna hand whisk in. That energy smells so good. It smells just like a fresh fruit orchard with limes and lemons and grapefruits. It's delicious kind of like, I don't know, Skittles or Sweet Tarts, something really yummy. And now I'm gonna give that white just a really quick stick blend, and then I'm going to show you what this looks like. A drop swirl is pretty easy to do. It's called this because you literally are dropping this open from varying angles and varying heights in different patterns throughout your entire mold. So just give the bottom a nice cover and then start S swirling in, dropping in from different heights, higher, lower. You're gonna wanna save a little bit of soap at the very end so that way you can do a little bit of fancy swirling on the top. But this is gonna produce a swirl that is slightly chunkier than the last one but still really beautiful, looks very complex and since we're using these contrasting colors produces a really dramatic swirl. You'll notice the energy fragrance is just behaving beautifully which I'm thankful for and I of course had no doubt because it is a stalwart fragrance for Brambleberry and one of my favorites to use whenever I'm trying a new technique or I'm not quite sure how a batch is going to turn out. So now that I'm getting a little closer to the top, I'm gonna get a little more serious about where I'm pouring my soap, so that way I have a little bit of contrast colors at the very end, so I can swirl it. And the contrasting colors are really nice to give you a beautiful top. So pouring low and slow, you see that? The lower you get, the slower you get, the more the surface tension will hold, and then you can get your design. So we can go lots of white because we have a lot of green and a lot of purple left. So I'm done with my white, I think. Now I'm gonna go in and using these easy pour containers that allow for perfect control, I'm just gonna go low and slow. And I should specify this is not part of the drop swirl. This is just me wanting the top to look fancy. The drop swirl part is done. I just really love a good swirled top. And so now I'm going to take a small swirl tool. Here we go. And then I'm gonna do my traditional linear swirl. And once I have my traditional linear swirl done, I'm gonna do a little loop-de-loop -loop swirl. 
I am not putting this more than one quarter of the inch of the way through because I don't want this to affect the swirl underneath. You'll notice where there's more white that the swirl is slightly more impressive. And that's because there was more white. And so there's the loop-de-loop, -loop, where you literally make little loop-de-loops throughout the whole thing. And then you are done. Okay, this is going to go get sprayed with 99% rubbing alcohol and go sit on a little gel pad for a while. And now let's see what this looks like when it's cut. Okay, so now let's see what this swirl looks like compared to the in this pot swirl. So hello, drop swirl. Ooh, I can see that air release going perfectly. Thank you, sodium lactate. And swirl mix, beautiful colors, beautiful contrast. I am loving the look of this. I can totally see that it gelled based on the side. Um, there's some little kind of pock marks almost, and that's because this soap did fully gel. I'm gonna save this so I can do a horizontal swirl. This is a much more chunky swirl than the other one, a little bit more dramatic, I would say. It definitely is really giving me kind of those almost, I don't know, um, lava lamp vibes with woo, woo. I really like the contrasting colors. They turned out beautifully. I'm gonna check out a horizontal swirl, see what that looks like with this. Looks pretty similar. I love how this looks. The drop swirl is gorgeous. And again, a perfect beginner swirl. So our very final swirl that we're going to do is a hanger swirl. This is the most difficult of the three swirls that I'm going to be teaching you today. However, it is still pretty easy. You do have to have a slightly more nuanced understanding of trace because you're gonna be doing some kind of light layers when you do this one. So for this, we're going to do what we always do, which is pour gently down the shaft of our stick blender, trying to avoid our bubbles from forming. Bubbles are fine in your final bar soap. They just don't quite look as good as I like them to look because they make little tiny, unsightly white spots. And then we're going to get a nice thin to medium trace. We're actually going for a slightly thicker trace here because we need our layers to sort of suspend, not all the way, but sort of. And one of the preparations that we've done, in addition to our colorants being done and our fragrance being fully measured out, is we've also made sure that our hanger swirl, our hanger swirl tool fits in the mold. And I'm just gonna stick blend my fragrance into the entire batch. Thank you, Energy, for working so well. If this was a difficult to use fragrance, I would never, ever, ever attempt that in a million years. But since energy smells delicious and basically acts like water in the soap, you can do that. So now we have a really nice trace and I'm gonna end up stick blending each of these layers before I put them in. So I'm gonna separate my batch into three even layers. And in this case, I'm just gonna eyeball it. Gonna add my colorants. And purple's gonna go on the bottom layer. And then I'm gonna do white. So I'm gonna stick blend that purple so the colorant gets a little bit thicker. So this layer gets a little bit thicker so it'll suspend the white layer. All right, purple, go on in, Wee! Whoa, okay. <laughs> it's really pretty. So now I have hand whisked my titanium dioxide in and it's really, really, really liquidy. I'm gonna try to break the white soap's fall just a little bit by doing something called flooding, which is kind of when you let the spatula take the weight of the soap and then the spatula pours low and slow for you. And so that floods the soap. So that way we'll still have a really nice thin soap that's not going to have really mixed too much with the soap underneath. So our hanger swirl ends up having some really nice, beautiful layers. This flooding technique, maybe a little bit more advanced, it's not a big deal if these layers break through because we are going to be using this hanger swirl tool to end up breaking through the layers anyways. 
Once you get that initial layer down, you can kind of pour low and slow, and then you don't have to worry about the spatula, which is just, you know, a little bit easier because the spatula situation is a little bit awkward. And here's where this turns into a hanger swirl. We have our hanger swirl tool, and yes, you could use a uh, clothes hanger, or you could use this brambleberry tool, but either way, I've got it me measured perfectly so it can go all the way down on the sides. Then you go over and up and over, down and over and up, over and down, over and up, over and down, over and up, over and down, over and up. And this is dragging those beautiful layers up. So it's up to you how many you want. You can keep going if you want them to be more swirls. You can, if you want them to be thicker, you can pour with different velocity or pull with different velocity because now you can see I'm pulling the purple up from the bottom. And then once that's done, it's time to just take your leftover soap, but just pour it in a line here, pour it in a line here. And again, this is optional. We are done with our hanger swirl. This is just me making the soap look extra pretty. And then I'll give this a nice swirl at the very top. So that way we have a little bit of things to differentiate and have the soap look cute on top. And you can see in this purple especially, this is a thicker trace. Like we did stick blend this longer because we wanted our layers to actually hold, remember? So that very first layer, we did stick blend for longer. And so now I can take this and I can make a swirl however I want. So the last ones, we were able to swirl really nicely like this. And so this was no exception. We'll be able to swirl beautifully like this, back and forth in a linear swirl. And this purple is really staying put because it was the first of the layers. It was stick blended the most. And so it is staying the least loose, but it is still a gorgeous swirl. And I still cannot wait to see what this looks like cut. So here I'm gonna pull gently away from the sides just like I did with the other ones. Gonna push down. You can see that airlock breaking and whoosh. You can see where the hanger was right here and this actually cuts just a little bit harder than the other ones because this was poured at a thicker trace and you can see we have our beautiful hangers just up and down gorgeous gorgeous i love this look as well the layers give it a pretty dramatic look the hanger gives it a dramatic look and i really feel like when i look at this i go wait how did that get done and then this one will produce the most difference with the horizontal cut so this hanger swirl is a little bit more advanced, but still definitely doable for a beginner, especially if you're learning a little bit about your trace. So these are our different swirls. Here we have our in the pot swirl, where we actually did the swirl in the pot, and it got a lot of action when it was getting poured. This one is the, mold, the in the mold swirl that we did, the drop swirl. And you can see that drop swirl made a little bit bigger lines, a little bit more dramatic. This is the in the pot swirl is by far the most wispy. Then of course our hanger swirl that has the dramatic lines that you can see that there was layers, but you're like, oh, there's some differentiation. These are all three gorgeous swirl techniques. They're perfect for beginners. And once you get these under your belt, we have plenty of advanced techniques right here on this video or at brambleberry.com in the projects and articles section. Thanks so much for watching today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up below, but more importantly, I'm so curious, which swirl did you like the best? What are you gonna try first? Comment below and let me know. And if you make any of these or really any soap with Brambleberry products, I love to see it on social media, hashtag it Bramble on, so we can see what you're creating and get inspired. Until next time, happy soaping. Maybe just do it one more time. Just yeah, I, I did syncopate it. It was weird. <laughs> That's right. I just um, have a tiny little arms. Pre-measured, perfect batch of oils. That's they right. Can, it's soap. Like, it's soap. It's a lot soap. Of these... Possibilities are endless. Endless. They are endless. Yeah. Okay, um, swirl time. We've known each other for so long. Your heart's been aching, but you're too proud to say it. I put this glove on wrong. We're taking away your uh, my glove clean. privileges. Yeah, you're so clean, by the way. Okay. Oh, living on a prayer. <laughs> no, that was a pretty good eyeball. Yay! Oh my God, I was there the whole time. I feel like the girl who saw the boy 
and was like, oh, you were there the whole time. Mm -hmm. 